This video is one that I've wanted to make for quite a long time. I'm going to be making my own homemade pocket notebook. I have reviewed and used a lot of different pocket notebooks in the past month and a half or so. Each book had its own strengths as well as weaknesses. They were all great, yet they all had things I didn't like as much. I figured, hey, I can make my own and make it perfect. This project begins with the gathering of materials. I've been collecting these pieces of light cardboard or maybe heavy cardstock, one of the two, for several months now. I haven't used any of these because I wasn't sold on the size of them. As I said, I've had this idea for a while and I just, one of the reasons I haven't done it is because I haven't found the right piece of material. But that was until I found this piece. It's about eight by 11, I think, eight inches by 11 inches. This is the one that as soon as I found it, I knew I was gonna use it. It's big enough to where I can just cut out whatever size of notebook I want. I find the field notes and books like it to be a hair too big. These are three and a half inches by five and a half inches. And I'm looking for something closer to three inches by five inches. Like I said, just a hair. Next, I need to measure. The rule is, measure twice, cut once. This tidbit of dad wisdom is important here because I wound up getting a couple of different measurements. So if I want my covers to be three inches by five inches, I need a piece that's five inches by six inches to account for both covers. Now where my measuring trouble came in and where I used the measure twice rule was in accounting for the binding. Had I just left the covers at five inches by six inches, I would lose space due to the space that it takes to bind the cover and pages together. So with that, I added one sixteenth of an inch to the end. That way I could use that sixteenth of an inch in the middle for my fold and binding. Once everything was measured twice, it was time to cut. The scissors I was using weren't perfectly straight. There's a slight curve at the end of the blade, so I just grabbed the X-Acto knife to clean it up a tad. Nothing too crazy. Now it's time for paper. For this project, I wanted to use plain printer paper. I would maybe have used line paper, but to be completely honest, I forgot I had some. This was probably for the best anyway, seeing as the printer paper is much stronger and generally better quality. I began cutting the paper once I got my rough outline drawn. This time, completely disregarding the measure twice rule, I started in with the X-Acto knife. I needed a substantial amount of pressure to get through multiple layers of paper. On this first run, I wasn't able to get all the way through. I had to use the scissors for the cleanup work. Thankfully, I did much better on the second section of pages, and even better on the third. I counted all the sheets once I got them together, and I ended up at 33 sheets, or 66 pages. I didn't pre-plan how many I wanted, I just sort of eyeballed it until it felt right. I got the pages all folded together, and to no surprise, they were off. The tops and bottoms, they were okay, but the sides, where I had originally failed to measure a straight line, were all sorts of wacky. It wasn't very long at all before I decided the course of action to take. I would get my pages to the right place and file down the excess. At this point, we're straying further and further from our initial goal of perfection. But that's totally okay. Now that the covers are cut, the pages are cut, and we have a solid looking notebook set up. It's time to officially put it all together. I wanted to clamp the notebook so that it wouldn't pull or do anything weird while I stitched the binding. I chose to stitch the binding for two reasons. One, I prefer it over staples. And two, I don't have any staples. 
book. With the notebook fixins being as thick as they were all stacked together, I knew a simple sewing needle wouldn't do the trick. I couldn't just poke it through. I fashioned this little rail so I could drill the holes without going through my cutting mat. I could just hold the notebook in one hand and drill with the other, but it would slip and render the holes not straight. I did this for the first couple of holes, and they were fine, but I knew the further up I got, it would just only get worse, so I had to come up with something. After drilling, the next step was to sew. I chose brown thread for this, which was kind of random at first, but later on would prove to be a great creative decision. I will be executing a running stitch for the binding here. My fiance taught me that. I'll go through one way, down and back and down and back, and then through the same holes, I'll come back, but in the opposite direction. That way it has this look that is all lined up together and there's no spaces in between. The stitching was a tedious and time-consuming process. But that's the price you pay for being thorough and making it strong. About six feet of thread and only a couple very minor needle related injuries later, I clamped the book shut and let it sit overnight to help it settle into its form. Fast forward to this morning. I take the clamps off of the notebook and the only thing I really had planned for this was to customize it a bit. I made my own little rip off of field notes and put the little one of one on the back. There's only one. Who knows if I'll end up using this book or not. This little project started out as my attempt to make the perfect notebook for me. It's the right size, the right shape, plenty of pages, the works. But in making the thing, I realized that the beauty of something like this is not how perfect it is, but simply in making the thing. Sometimes it isn't about the result, the finish line. The real reward is not the trophy, or in this case, the really nice pocket notebook. The real reward is the process. Going through certain problems in the making process and being able to figure them out and come up with solutions. That's the real joy. The art of making is more about the act of making than it is about the thing you made. So my new homemade pocket notebook may or may not actually get used, and that's fine. There is pleasure in having made a thing, and with that, I am satisfied.